Hello and welcome back to another video in our series on robotic process automation using the Power Automate desktop. And this is our third video in a series where we've been discussing how Power Automate desktop can be used for automating some of those legacy applications that you may have. In our previous video, we covered using variables to make the execution of our desktop flows dynamic. And so we walked you through how to create those variables. And in this video, we're going to be begin guiding you through how you can pass in new values into those variables from external locations. For example, we've been working on desktop flows, but what if I want to execute a desktop flow from the cloud flows that we might design? Well, you can do that, and you can also pass in new variable values through your cloud flow down into your desktop flow. And so that's what we're going to be looking at in today's video. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Now, again, we're going to be leveraging some uh, tools that are part of the Robotic Process Automation in a Day class by Microsoft that we deliver, and you can also sign up for free. Down in the description, you can find where you can sign up for the full-length class that goes much deeper into RPA and, more specifically, Power Automate Desktop. Now, because we have already built out our desktop flow, we're now going to be leveraging cloud flows from the web browser at PowerAutomate.com to be able to design a solution that can execute our desktop flow. So we're already looking here at our uh, web browser and through the web browser at PowerAutomate.com, we're gonna be creating a new flow. So we're gonna go ahead and go to My Flows. And from the My Flows section, we're going to create a new flow. And we'll make this very simple. We're not gonna get too fancy with it for this example. We're kind of getting the, the basics through this video series. So we're gonna create a new flow and we're going to make this an instant cloud flow. So we'll go ahead and select instant cloud flow. And just to make things super simple, we'll go ahead and name this our uh, add new accounts. Let's spell it right. Cloud flow. OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and select that we want to do a manual trigger. You can, of course, change the trigger inside your cloud flows to whatever you want. But since this is a set of videos that's focused on desktop flows, I'm going to be kind of brief on the Cloudflow experience here. All right, then I'll hit Create. And this is going to create the shell of our Cloudflow that we'll then be able to add in new actions into. So you can see right now we have a manual trigger of our flow. We're going to add in some new steps, more, uh, more specifically, a step to execute our desktop flow. And then we'll see where we can pass in variable values into that desktop flow. So I'm going to go ahead and select that we want to create a new action. And the type of action that we want is going to be a desktop flow action. So you can see there's a category for it here. You can also go searching for desktop flow actions. We're just going to select the category for desktop flows. Then we're going to choose that we want to run a flow built with Power Automate Desktop. So that's the top option here. You'll notice that it is a premium connector. We're going to select that for this option. Now, when you run desktop flows from the cloud, there are two ways that you can connect your on-premises desktop solutions to the cloud. And so one of the things that you'll see here is that you'll see underneath desktop flows where you can actually specify how you're going to connect into those sources. Now, in this case, it already has me connected in here. You can see I've already connected in. I am using an option here uh, called a data gateway, but you can also use another option called machines. And there's machines that you can kind of turn on very briefly where you can find that with inside of the desktop application. If you look underneath settings, you'll see there's a machines preview area where you can actually wire up and configure your machine to connect into the cloud. So this is essentially your secure method for connecting your desktop solutions, your on-premises solutions to the cloud. You also can do another method called the on-premises data gateway. Uh, I'm going to be pretty kind of brief on that for this video because our main purpose here is once you have the machine or the data gateway configured, you can then select the desktop flow that you want to execute. So our uh, account entry, for example, and then you can tell it whether or not you want to run this flow in attended or unattended mode. Real quickly, very briefly, the difference between those two. Attended mode means that someone has to be logged in. So in this case, I am logged in. I can do that. But someone has to be logged into your machine to execute the desktop flow, whereas an unattended execution means that you can have it uh, configured on a machine where no one is logged in, and it can run those flows for you on its own without having to have a certain person logged in. That's what an unattended execution is. There is an additional cost to doing unattended execution. So that's something you want to look up uh, as well as you're considering whether or not you want to have someone logged in or not. Uh, ideally, you would have them run in unattended mode. But again, there is an extra cost to that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select attended mode for the purposes of our demo. And then you'll see here our variables. Here are our input variables that we created with inside of our desktop flows. 
and we can now specify what kind of values we want to pass in. Now keep in mind, Power Automate also has the ability to capture values from previous actions or tasks or triggers that you have and flow the, pass them down the line into lower actions that you may have. So for example, if I had a trigger that pulled in for Power Apps, I could use values from Power Apps and pass them into my Power Automate desktop solution. For the purposes of our demonstration, I'm going to hard code a couple values in here and we'll make my company name will be something like uh, Brian's Bananas. Okay, and then that's uh, fine, we'll go with that. We'll make the person name here Brian Knight. Let's spell it right at least, how about that? And then we'll make the contact email. I'm gonna plug my own contact and in, in email in here just so no one is emailing Brian and he'll be confused by it. But by doing this, we've created a cloud flow that we can pass in values from our, uh, into our desktop flow, but from the cloud. Now you could also add other actions in here. So say for example, I wanted to email the person, I could add in an email action here. So maybe a send mail or send email it probably shows up as. Yeah, there it is, send an email. So I could actually send an email to the person or the account contact if I wanted to by using the Office 365 connector. And I could select that and then choose who I wanna send it to. And I could also pick up values that came from my desktop flow. So notice right here, my head's in the way. Let me move aside here for a moment. Oh, wrong way. Notice right here next to my head that we have this output account variable, this out ID, account ID. That is capturing the account ID that we had inside of our desktop flow and outputting it into our cloud flow so we can use it somewhere else. Because if you remember the process, again, watch the previous video if you haven't already, we had both input and output variables and we can see the output variables available whenever we're working with inside of our desktop flow. Or sorry, I should say our Cloudflow right here. So our Cloudflow is actually exposing to us any kind of output variables that are from our flow that it will return back and they can be used somewhere else throughout the process. So that's where you can see those variables uh, being made available to you. So our input variables are gonna be pushed into our flow and then our output variables are gonna show and allow us to pull values out of the execution of the desktop flow. So that's really it for this video. It's just briefly to show you how you can run the Power Automate desktop solutions from the cloud and then use those variables that we talked about in our previous video to be able to either send values into your desktop flow or extract values out of your desktop flow. So that's really what we're focused on on this video is leveraging cloud flows and desktop flows together. You can certainly go much more in depth into it than this, but this is kind of gonna give you a taste of it. If you're interested in diving in much deeper into Power Automate Desktop, then check out our RPA in a day class that we've recorded for free. You'll find a link in the description on where you can watch that course and learn more. Thank you so much for joining me today and look forward to showing you more about how Power Automate Desktop works in a future video. Thank you so much.